So now the question is, would a self-realized, self-satisfied person, would they take care of sending their children to good schools? Mm -hmm. Would they? Mm -hmm. Not absolutely necessarily. Some fully self-realized, self-satisfied persons live as avidutas. Mm -hmm. They live away from society. They just, they have nothing to do with society. They don't work. <laughs> They don't even interact with people as an ordinary person. They wouldn't have kids, though, would they? <laughs> um, they might have kids. If you're fully self-realized, Krishna says a fully self-realized person has no duties to perform. And the next thing he says, and he has no reason to not, not, not perform. Them. So occasionally, very rarely, we will find self-realized souls exhibiting external behavior, which we would term as madness. Where they have nothing to do with society, with none of the, the duties and responsibilities of society. <coughs> that is the, sometimes. Generally, the self-realized soul doesn't act that way. Why? You got, you got to charge each instance. Because people will think that's the process. They'll think, oh, if I just become irresponsible and walk around like a madman, then I'll become self-realized. And so it's, it's not generally done. Also, Krishna has things he wants to accomplish, even in this world of illusion. And therefore, one's doing it as a service. So Bhakti Nautakura says, I now see my home. If this home belongs to you, it's your home, Krishna. That's why we have the altar and the deities. Your mind is, it's Krishna's home. It's not my house, it's Gornita's house. They get the food. I spend a good chunk of my money on them. I spend my time on them. Everything's revolving around them. It's their house. Well, if it's their house, then my other family members who live here are their servants. We're all supposed to take care of them. It's my job. And so Krishna's given me that as my job. My happiness is coming from my relationship with Krishna. And Krishna's saying, would you please take care of these people? So we take care of it too. nicely. Actually, you do your job better. But not for your personal, you already have your personal satisfaction. Your relationship with others then becomes on the platform of freedom. So instead of my taking care of you because I'm thinking you're going to give me happiness, which is a calculated business deal ultimately, sorry. But you know, if I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to really take nice care of my kids because then I'll be if they go to the best schools, I'll be able to say, my kids, they don't do something for me. I'm thinking, I'm doing this as a son. I'm already happy. I don't need anything for my children. I don't need anything for my husband. I don't need anything for my wife. I can just get it. You can't imitate them. You cannot imitate it. It's not possible. You'll, you'll explode periodically. I don't me! <laughs> you can't do it. But the goal is to come to a point that you're so satisfied, that you're so full, that you can just live. You don't, if you, you don't need anything. Therefore, Krishna says there's no need to depend on any other living being. No reason to do anything, no reason not to do anything, no need to depend on any other living being. It's not controlled by the ordinary course of events. It's not controlled by whether things are auspicious or inauspicious. That's freedom. And what's really nice about that is, you know, if, if somehow your kid doesn't do well in school, you're not devastated. So your life isn't over. You know, if your wife's having a bad day, it's it doesn't, your, your, your happiness isn't affected. You just think, poor lady. <laughs> <laughs> Your love isn't dependent, you know, on whether or not she's nice to you. You can still love. You can still love your boss and your co-workers and whatever. It's not, you're not, you're not thinking, well, I can only love them if they're nice to me. <laughs> but we see that the great souls, they're more responsible in the world because of being as a service. I can't be fully responsible if I'm thinking that my work is a source of my happiness because as soon as it's not giving me the happiness that I want, then I kind of pull back a little bit. So I don't know if I really want to take this much trouble. So Self-realized self is actually happy and more responsive. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. Um, just one quick question. How do you balance that with, um, say, say, women who, because we hear that they have to be sheltered from a young age by the father, then married by the husband, and then age one by the son. How do you juggle? Well, it's only 
one person you're dependent on. It's only one person who protects you. Six symptoms of surrender. Krishna is my only maintainer. Krishna is my only protector. Krishna is my only show. It's not a question of balancing anything. Krishna may be, may be making a certain arrangement for my protection and my maintenance. If you work at a job and your boss gives you a paycheck, I'll tell you that's coming from Krishna. Whatever care and affection and shelter and guidance your husband gives you, his intelligence is coming from Krishna. And you should serve him and take care of him to please Krishna. If you're just trying to please him, you know, sometimes he'll be pleased. Sometimes he won't be pleased. With the same behavior. You know, one day he'll really like you rice, and the next day he won't like the same rice because he had a bad day at work. <laughs> <laughs> and if your world revolves around your husband going, oh, this is great, you know, then you're going to go like this. <laughs> and eventually you're going to be angry. I gave my life to please you and to serve you. And I gave up so many things. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't care about it. Doing it to please Krishna. This is the service what Krishna's giving me. Krishna's telling me to obey my father and my husband, take care of my son. Yeah. So I do to Krishna. So I try to please Krishna. And my happiness comes from that relationship. And it's Krishna who's making me. And I thank Krishna. I say, thank you, Krishna, for arranging that I have this nice father or this nice husband or this nice son. Or thank you, Krishna, that I don't have such a nice husband or nice father. <laughs> See, everything is as persona. Even medicine. Good parents, sometimes they give you Sometimes I give you one of the uh, Columbia sweets. Sometimes I give you medicine. <coughs> Thank you, parents, for your medicine. Also. Also. Just like if you're, if you're sick, we're all sick here. We're all diseased. <laughs> we don't think we're diseased. Now, just like, please don't think I'm aiming this at anyone in particular. I use this example many times. <laughs> but just like a person may feel may feel healthy, they may think I'm healthy, you know, and they just go in for their normal physical, and the doctor says, "Hey, you got cancer." And they believe it. How do you know? You know. And they say, "Here you go. Just look at this test result." And you trust them. And then they say, "Okay, now we're going to cut you open." And you thank them for that, right? You say, thank you for coming over. You thank Krishna even for the difficulty. Thank him when he gives you nice food to eat and a good husband takes care of you. The days your husband's mad at you, thank you for reminding me that my happiness is in you. And I'm not going to find what I'm looking for in another jiva. And I'm going to go on with my service. My service is not dependent on this or that external service. Is that okay? Yes. I'm a little My sort of taking your question, my question is this, right? That uh, Krishna or God gives you this pain, right? Which is which I've read in, in one of the sort of scriptures I'm reading. The pain is given to you because you're, you're, you're blessed. The reason why it is so is that because when, when God or Krishna gives you pain, it is, it is to detach you from this material world. So that you get so, you know, sometimes what happens is the only way you give up material things is that, you know, when you have no control, right? And, and the, the, the reason that you see that, I think there's a, the, in the same lectures that I heard, it says that, you know, I think Dropti or, or I think asked, you know, it's when he, when he was very pleased with, you know, Krishna was very pleased with, it, with her. And he asked her, what, 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 what gift, what, what can I do for you, right? And her, her actual answer was that, can you put me into hell? 
you know, and that was her, her wish to go into hell. And Krishna says, why? Why is that? And the, the answer she gave, right, was that, so I, I can never forget you. So when we are in pain, we are more close to God, generally, right? People, you know, so the reason why, why we get pain in life is so that we, that, that we you know, so it, honestly, it's, it's kind of a form to give you detachment in this world. Otherwise, we are too materially attached in our comfort. C certainly, if you can think of it that way, and, and I think you're referring to Kunti rather than George. Um, but it's explained in the Bhagavatam that the world is engineered to favor the mode of goodness. In other words, the universe is arranged to favor <coughs> truth. Sattva. Sat means goodness. It also means? Truth. truth. truth yeah. So anything that's truth is going to bring you more happiness than something that's false. And the way I think of it is if you walk through that door, that will be very pleasant, and if you try to walk through the wall, it will be painful. You can't exactly say that the architect of the house is giving you pain. If you choose to walk through the wall instead of the door, it's not exactly that the architect is giving you pain so you can remember that there's an architect. <laughs> However, when you walk into the wall, you will feel pain and then you will probably remember that there's an architect. <laughs> the person responsible for your pain, though, is you, 100%. So Krishna has no desire to give anybody pain ever. He has no envy. <coughs> if you if you have a disease and you go to a doctor and the doctor cuts you open, it's not that the doctor wants to give you pain. But once you become diseased, cutting you open may be the only way to cure you. <coughs> So our pain is entirely 100% our own doing. As far as Kunti's prayer sets, Kunti's operating on a different platform of existence. <laughs> so she's not experiencing material miseries as miseries. And what she was talking about was that whenever there was some catastrophe from the external point of view, Krishna personally walked in the door. So she's saying, what I'd like is for you to keep walking in the door. <laughs> and if the house has to be burning down for you to do that, then let's have the house burn down because I want you to walk in the door. So that's what she was saying. It wasn't that she was saying, I want to suffer, I want to suffer. But I mean, quite literally, Krishna was personally. You know, if every time there was some catastrophe, God himself walked into your house, <coughs> then you'd also say, hey, give me the catastrophe. <laughs> Because when everything there'll be problems again and again, so I'll see you again and again. But that's that's not quite on the level that we're talking about. So it's not that the devotees pray for me. I do, yes. Don't you want them to be happy? I do want them to be happy, but then again, it's, it's God's desire to really truly believe. It's that not God's not, desire for us to suffer, no. No, no, but I mean, their desire, I don't know, if they're happy or they're sad, it is to do with whatever God but has planned for them. you would like them to be happy. Yeah, as, as a, yes, I would like it. But then again, so Krishna also wants you to be happy to suffer. You don't want your children to be happy by being drug addicts. No. So no. Krishna doesn't want us to be happy in illusion where we're not really happy. He wants us to have genuine happiness. And sometimes that may be that he throws us into a drug treatment program. Like you might, you know, if you had a child who was a heroin addict, you might push them into a drug treatment program. But again, you're not making them suffer. If they're doing that to themselves. Is that okay? Krishna only wants us to be happy. Krishna doesn't desire anyone to suffer. Ever. He never desires for anyone to suffer. Even an ordinary parent doesn't desire for their children to suffer. Even a materialistic parent doesn't desire suffering for their children. Even animals don't desire suffering. I should stop here because Johnny Taipu is also supposed to speak. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.